Periodic trans ionization energy. In this video, we'll explain what ionization energy is, the trend, why the trend exists, and then we'll rank atoms in order of ionization energy. And for each of these, there'll be some exceptions along the way as well, which we didn't really see in atomic radius, so we'll have to know those too. Ionization energy is the amount of energy that it takes to remove an electron, thereby creating an ion. We'll mainly be talking about the first ionization energy in this video. In class, we'll also do some discussion about second and third ionization energies. The horizontal trend is caused by the increased effective nuclear charge as we go across the periodic table. Since the effective nuclear charge increases as we go to the right, the ionization energy will also increase. Think about our concert analogy. If it was a really, really great concert, the concert goer in the back wouldn't really want to leave it. In order to get them to leave, it would take a lot of energy. If it wasn't a very good concert, or there wasn't a very high effective nuclear charge, it would be very easy for that person in the back row to leave. As we go down the periodic table, the electrons get further away from the nucleus, and there are more layers of electrons between the valence shell and the nucleus. Thinking again about our analogy, even if it was a really, really, really great concert, if you are so far away that you can't see the performers, you may be inclined to leave pretty easily if you got a text about something more interesting to go see. Putting it back in chemical terms, this means that as you go down the periodic table and you're adding these layers of electrons, you're getting further from the nucleus, you have more shielding, and it becomes easier to remove an electron. Or in other words, the ionization energy decreases. Now let's do a few examples. We'll start with some that follow the trend and then we'll start talking about the, the, one, the exceptions to the trend. Let's rank helium, neon, and argon from lowest to highest. Because argon is the furthest down the periodic table, the outside electrons are gonna be furthest from the nucleus. This means that they're gonna be shielded plus a long ways away. So they're gonna be very easy to remove. Or in other words, they have a very low ionization energy. Helium has the lowest number of electron shells. So those electrons are very close to the nucleus and they aren't shielded at all because there's no electrons in the middle. This means that it's gonna be very difficult to remove that electron. So that means it has a high ionization energy. So we have argon and then neon and then helium. Let's look at another one. Boron, lithium, and neon. These are all in one row of the periodic table. As we go to the right, the effective nuclear charge increases. This means that the nucleus is gonna be holding those electrons tighter and tighter. Or in other words, that the first ionization energy is larger. So as we go to the right, the ionization energy increases. And that's because of the effective nuclear charge increasing. Now that we know the general trend, we need to talk about some exceptions that we come across. We didn't see very many of these, or really any, in the radius periodic trend. And that's because the atomic radius doesn't really have anything to do with electron configurations. However, when we start adding and subtracting electrons, we need to think about what happens to the electron configuration and whether we're adding or subtracting stability when we add or subtract electrons. And so we'll see these exceptions come up in both ionization energy and in later videos when we do electron affinity. So here I have a picture from Wikipedia, which graphs the ionization energies. Now I have the S and P block exceptions highlighted. Those are the only ones that you're gonna need to know. You're not gonna need to know the D block ones, but you should know all the S and P block exceptions. So why would this reversal of the trend happen at beryllium and boron, as well as nitrogen and oxygen. To figure out why this is, let's look at the electron configurations of each. So I would actually suggest pausing the video and writing the electron configurations of beryllium, 
boron, nitrogen, and oxygen on your own first for practice, and then come back. All right, let's start with beryllium and boron. For beryllium, we have helium, 2s2. For boron, we have the, pretty much the same thing, but now we have an extra electron in the P. Now, what do we notice about this? Beryllium have a, has a full S shell and no electrons in the P orbital. For beryllium, there's only this one electron in the P orbital. We know that fully filled and half filled subshells are stable. And so what happens here is that because the S orbital beryllium is filled, but there's just this one little extra electron for the boron, it's much easier to take away the electron for the boron than it would be for the beryllium because it gets it to a full S shell. Meanwhile, for the beryllium, you're losing the stability of a full subshell by taking one away. Let's do the same thing for nitrogen and oxygen. For nitrogen, we have 2s2, 2p3, and for oxygen, 2s2, 2p4. Let's think about this in the same way that we thought about beryllium and boron, but now we're gonna be talking about half-filled. So nitrogen has a half-filled subshell, while oxygen has one extra compared to nitrogen. So because of this, it's much easier to take away an electron from the oxygen than it is to take one from the nitrogen, which is already at a stable electron configuration. So therefore, even though oxygen has the higher effective nuclear charge, that's still true. It is easier to take away the electron because of the electron configuration. The same, of course, is gonna be true of the next row down in the periodic table for both. So in that case, you have magnesium and aluminum for your S, and then phosphorus and sulfur for your P, where you get that reversal. Now let's rank a few that do involve exceptions. So we'll rank lithium, boron, and beryllium. Well, normally the trend would say that the ordering would be lithium, beryllium, boron, as I have it listed here. Because beryllium has a full S shell, its ionization energy is gonna be higher than boron. It's already stable. Where boron, by losing that electron, actually gets a stable, a more stable electron configuration. So the ordering here will be lithium, and then boron, and then beryllium. Now let's do carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. While the trend would say that the ordering would be carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen because oxygen has the highest effective nuclear charge, because there is that repulsion caused by the fourth P electron in oxygen, its ionization energy is lower than that of nitrogen, leaving it as carbon, and then oxygen, and then nitrogen. Now I do wanna say one thing about this. When Occasionally when people are doing these problems, they'll perhaps move oxygen back a little bit too much. So oxygen and nitrogen here will kind of flip-flop places you can think of um, as compared to the trend, but it's still gonna be higher than carbon. So make sure that when you go to do this, you recognize that, okay, oxygen, even though it has that higher effective nuclear charge, is gonna be lower than nitrogen. It's not gonna be lower than carbon though. And the same thing, of course, is gonna be true when we're talking about the S block exceptions and the other P block exceptions that are further down the periodic table. Now let's make one quick comment about the second and third ionization energies, and then we'll do some examples in class um, using them. So the first one will always be the smallest. When you go to pull off that first electron, you're starting from a place where you have the same number of protons as electrons. Once you remove one, now you have more protons than you do electrons. And so it's going to be pulling in those electrons tighter. So when you try to remove the second one, it's gonna be higher. And then when you try to remove the third, it'll be higher even than the second. And each one will get larger. Now, what you can be able to tell about this is you actually look at the magnitude of the change, whether it changes by a little bit or a lot. And this is what we'll practice doing in class. Now that we've finished this video, you should have a basic understanding of what ionization is and how the trend arises, and be able to rank elements in order of their ionization energies. We'll of course continue our discussion of periodic trends in the following podcasts.